Praxis Prepper. Wee Everybody, this is Praxis. Sometimes I get my video ideas from things that I'm just working on around the house, if I'm working on some kind of like sustainability project or you know something that makes me more self-sufficient, I like to share that with you guys. Uh, other times, if there's a topic that's kind of presenting itself out in the world right now, uh, that might be something that I might do a video on. And occasionally I will do a video, you know, specifically because I'm seeing a lot of comments coming in. And uh, this is one of those videos where I want to address a uh, a type of comment that I've been seeing a lot of lately. Uh, oftentimes on my channel, uh, I'm advocating for uh, things like creating a smaller footprint. I, I come at a lot of this sustainability, uh, self-sufficiency kind of stuff from kind of an environmental angle. That's what that was my doorway into all of this. You know, trying to create a smaller carbon footprint, trying to live smaller on the planet. Um, that has lots of benefits in terms of you know. The ecology around you if you're you know polluting less and using less of the uh, natural resources around you but it also has a lot of self-sufficiency benefits the less you need the less stuff you need and that's a benefit when that stuff might not be in the same kind of supply that you're accustomed to does that sound familiar <laughs> right now i think a lot of people are uh you know seeing that uh you know and for the past year or so uh, a lot of the stuff that we're accustomed to having access to isn't always there, and when it is there, the prices are going up. Right now, I think that the two big threats that are facing, I don't like to use the word threats, the two big changes, the two big changes that are, uh, you know, facing a lot of people are changes to uh, the way that our economy is set up and changes to what's going on in the environment. Uh, both of those are having an impact on people in a couple of ways. One, it's just changing things and just changing things for people uh, can be challenging, can be difficult. A lot of people don't deal with change really well. Some people find it uh, exhilarating and uh, um, kind of well, exciting, uh, and I can understand that sometimes, and sometimes people find it frightening or irritating, and I can definitely, uh, you know, vouch for, uh, you know, understanding how change can be irritating sometimes. You know, you, you just get your, your pattern together, it's working really well, and then there's a screwball and you have to change everything up. So that's stressing a lot of people out right now, and in particular, uh, I uh, was uh, reading through some comments recently, and somebody uh, made a comment along the lines of the idea of kind of just pulling back and not being out and not engaging in the world and using that as a kind of way of kind of buffering yourself uh, in a number of ways it, and one in particular uh, uh, way that that is kind of like a buffer or a benefit at this point is that uh, I don't know if you've heard this is respiratory illness that's uh, you know circulating throughout the world right now and the more that you are interacting with people the more chances you have for contracting that so one of my solutions to that problem has been to just kind of pull back a little bit uh, you know not go out quite as frequently uh, and uh, you know appreciate time out here uh, that is uh, something that I feel works really well because when I'm here sitting here right now talking to you guys I have a 0% chance of contracting COVID right now. I mean, unless, uh, you know, somebody's uh, dog comes out of the woods and their dog gets going, you know, I mean, it's never a 0% chance, but, you know, just doing something like this, it, uh, it helps me to insulate myself uh, by, you know, having less exposure, but it also does other things. It also means that by my not driving out somewhere, I am not needing to burn fuel. I am not putting miles on my brake pads. And all of that stuff kind of overall saves me money. You, I mean, whenever you're buying a car, what do you look at? You look at the mileage. And the less miles that I'm going out there and putting on my vehicle, you know, the more that I'm saving those miles kind of for the future, you know, kind of putting them into a future so that I'll have them when I need them. Uh, other benefits uh, that, uh, that I'm seeing immediately from that is that, uh, you know, that's saving me money because I'm not going out, I'm not, you know, doing things where, you know, maybe there's a cost involved, doing things here that are kind of free. Behind me right now, you see there's a, a number of solar ovens out here. There's two right here and a solar cooker. Those aren't props that I just put up there for this video. I wasn't planning on doing this video until about 10 minutes ago. Those have been there all day. One of them's cooking some lentil soup. The other one is doing some beans, just beans and water. Uh, they're pinto beans and black beans uh, that are going to be for some chili that I'm going to make tomorrow. I like to boil them in water for one day and then the next day kind of cook the chili. And then the, the solar cooker, the big uh, round one back there, is just heating up some water for some tea that I'm going to enjoy after I have this conversation with you guys right now. 
Uh, those things right there are working for me for free. There's no electricity going into them. I guess you could say, well, I'm saving the earth. You know, it's all, you know, lovey-dovey. You know, isn't that so wonderful? But it also, zero electricity bills on those things. I advocate that stuff a lot of times on my channel. I keep circling back to this comment. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of people see that as horrible, really. Uh, in fact, somebody recently referred to it as kind of like, uh, you know, it's like you're in prison, you know, you're, you're imprisoned here at your, your house, you know, you, you can't go out, you're just, you know, you're locking yourself in. It's like, you know, it's like being a prisoner. And that's the way a lot of people see it. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure for the reasons for that, and I don't really care what the reasons are. I'm sure some of them have to do with the media, some of them have to do with kind of change. Uh, you know, there's fear mongering out there, uh, you know, certainly all over the place uh, where, uh, you know, the, the kind of thinking where, you know, George Bush Sr. said, the American way of life is non-negotiable. You know, the idea that the way we do it right now, that's the best way to do it, and there's, we're not going to negotiate to do any other way. What's implicit in there is that the way we're doing it right now is the best way, and you wouldn't want, anything else is going to be a step down. Not a step sideways, not a step up. Um, and I think a lot of people have internalized that. But one of the biggest things that you can do to insulate yourself and your family from the changes that are coming is to kind of pull back, is to use less stuff. Now, I, I know for people who have a problem with the idea of kind of like, you know, protecting the environment, I'm sorry, it's going to have that negative side effect. That it, might, it might be, you know, improving our world around us. There might be less pollution. I, I'm sorry if that's offensive to you. Uh, and, you, you know, it's really important to get that pollution up in the air. But um, if, if you can stomach, you know, that idea that you might possibly be making the environment you know, more pristine, more healthy for all of us, if you can stomach that, there are a lot of personal selfish benefits to you as well. You save a lot of money, and there's a lot of peace associated with it. If we are moving into a period where things are going to be profoundly different than they have been before, and I think that we are, a lot of people think that we are. A lot of people feel that the, you know, people call it the American way of life, but it's really like, it's kind of like the Western way of life. The idea of consume and ever expanding, you know, consumption, the, the key words are consumption and expanding uh, ad infinitum, uh, that uh, there, are, there are a lot of people that I think rightly so think that that might be coming to an end or at least, you know, slowing down for a while and people are terrified of that. For them, that feels like a prison sentence if you have to cut back and do things smaller. And there are a couple ways of dealing with that. One way is to embrace it, like I have. Uh, if you embrace it, if you roll with it, it can be really, really wonderful. It can be a really peaceful way of living your life. It can be a much less stressful way of living your life. You know, there's a reason why they call it the rat race, not because like, oh, rats in a race, what a, what a wonderful, <laughs> you know, the rat race is not intended to be something positive, and yet that is to what most of us seem to be aspiring, to get ever deeper and ever more entrenched in that rat race so you can win it and escape out to the other side. But life isn't a destination that you reach someday. Life is what you're living. What is it? Life is what you're uh, living while you're busy making other plans. What was it? The John Lennon line from the song. Wonderful song, but I forget it. But li life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans. That's the, uh, that's the line from the song. And it's, it's really true. Life is right here, right now. Life is me sitting on this stack of cinder blocks next to this peach tree, next to this mint, next to my dinner cooking for tonight and tomorrow night. Life for you is whatever you are doing right now, whether you're at your computer, at your desk, is there a window nearby? Can you look out the window? Is it peaceful? How does the air smell in the space in which you're in? What are the sounds that you're listening to right now? I'm listening to a cricket. There's a cricket right over there. My boy's playing inside. You know, what kind of sound space are you in right now? Is there traffic? Are there people yelling across the way? Stepping back, making things smaller, having a smaller footprint, withdrawing a little bit, not completely, but withdrawing a little bit, it's not all giving up stuff. It is not a prison sentence. It is really a different way of living life, and I would argue a really nice one. I'm not gonna say which one's better or worse. I kinda, I started this way of life um, about five years ago. I was kinda moving in this direction. Five years ago, I really uh, turned the switch, made a real change, and really kinda started doing this kinda stuff. 
Uh, prior to that, I was a cinematographer. I would, would be going out. I'd work in New York. I'd work in Boston. Uh, you know, other cities. I'd fly. You know, on airplanes all over the place. Um, a lot of that was kind of exciting. Yeah, you know, one of my favorite stories when I got sick on an air, airplane, and the only thing I could throw up in because there wasn't a vomit bag in the seat in front of me was my boot. <laughs> uh, you know, it makes for a lot of good stories, and I I always enjoyed working with the people that I worked with. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, there are things you give up when you trade one thing for another, but it's not a prison sentence. The world is changing right now. A lot of people believe that. I believe that. I think it's prudent to at least consider that that's a possibility. If those changes happen, do you want to be caught off guard? Do you want them to be shoved down your throat um, in a way that you can't control? Or do you want to have a little bit of say in that? If you start early, you get a little bit more of a vote. If you wait until the very last minute, did I get it? Nope. If you wait until the very last minute, a lot of your options close. A lot of your doors are, are, are shut off to you. You start now, and you have a lot more choice in the matter. So how do you do that? Well, one of the ways you do that is you look at the ways that you are spending money, because money is energy. If we are going to have less access to energy, and that is electrical energy or food energy or whatever, um, if you're going to have less access to energy in general, uh, think about it in terms of money, because money is kind of like energy. The less money that you're spending, the less money you're, uh, you're needing to put out there. Uh, and if you can look at it that way, it can be a really handy way. I got that mosquito. It can be a really handy way of helping you to focus on giving you that smaller, that smaller footprint. And the smaller your footprint is, uh, you know, the more that you can uh, build up padding and the less stuff that you need and the less problem it is for you when that stuff isn't available. Toilet paper shortage, just as one example. I'm going to do one example, toilet paper shortage. Here at this house, I always buy toilet paper in bulk. I think I've got like five cases, maybe even six cases of it up in our uh, you know, storage area. Uh, when there was a toilet paper shortage, it was never a problem for us. But let's say I didn't have those five or six cases. Let's say, you know, I, I don't know. I totally, uh, you know, uh, had a brain fart and forgot to order toilet paper for like two years or something like that. And I had no toilet paper. Uh, if I could be okay existing and being happy without having like soft, wonderful, downy freshness wiping my butt, and I could, uh, well, here. Is evening primrose. If I could be okay with that, I would turn a stressful situation into an interesting one, maybe one that's good for stories. <laughs> um, the less stuff you need to procure from someone else, the, less the more stuff you can just kind of get for free around you, the less stress you're going to feel when you can't get those things. I know a lot of people in my life uh, who are going to have a lot of trouble when stuff isn't available. People who are very particular. Like, this is my favorite brand of this. And if they got to use a different brand of that, it's like, oh, I don't know. You know, what, it, 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 it bothers them. And God forbid, it's like, well, that whole product line, that's not even available. You can't even get that kind of thing right now. People have a lot of trouble with that. Start getting okay with the idea of doing without things, finding substitutes for things. It is not a prison sentence. Doing without things, finding substitutes for things, it's, a, it's an interesting way of engaging with your environment. And the more that you engage with your environment, the more that you are throwing your awareness out there and all these assets that we have around us, the more you're throwing your consciousness out there, the less it's stewing in here. And there's so many studies that whenever people, I mean, we have a big problem with depression and anxiety issues in our society. And uh, there are plenty of studies that suggest the more you can get yourself out of here, and get yourself out there. And I don't mean like get in the car and drive somewhere. I mean, get your awareness outside of yourself to what's surrounding you. I've got uh, evening primrose here. I've got some red clover. I've got these guys here. I got my cricket friend in that direction. I'm gonna listen for a second. I can hear the stream down over here. The more you can get your consciousness out of here and around there, it solves a lot of those other issues. There are changes coming. But don't worry about it. There are things that you can do. All of us can live, survive, and thrive on way less than we're used to. And I know there are people that have more. There are people that have less. Even the people that have very little in our society, a lot of them live better than the kings of the medieval period. You know, we have heat in our homes in the winter and things like that. I mean, kings, they live in these hard, cold, dank castles. And, uh, I mean, you know, 
maybe their food was okay, but it, it certainly wasn't always well prepared. And there were all sorts of stomach parasites and everything. We've got it pretty good today. Even the people that have it rough have it pretty good. And again, some people have it much better than others. And I feel I'm lucky in my life. I have a, a lot of comfort in my life. Some of that's by design, some of that's by luck. But don't stress about what you don't have. Think about what you do have and think about how you can make do without as much stuff. That's what I want to talk about today. Changes are coming. It's not going to prison though when you do without stuff. It's just a different way of living and a lot of it's better. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.